And let's lift our hands to the Most High God and continue to bless His holy name. Let us worship Him. Give glory to Jehovah El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough, the one who can do and undo, the one who has power to do absolutely anything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you. Thank you forever. Thank you. In Jesus' marvelous names, we have worshipped. You are worthy, O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified hallelujah you are worthy oh lord you are worthy you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh lord you are worthy you are worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. Angels are singing, you are worthy, oh Lord, hallelujah, oh you are worthy, and we are singing, Papa. And we are singing, Savior, you are here for the Lord. You are worthy, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. 
Almighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Ancient of Days, Unchangeable Changer, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Holy One of Israel, the I Am that I Am, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Glory be to your holy name. Father, glory be to your holy name. Out of your great mercy, Lord, you have done marvelous things in our midst. We have had testimonies proving to us that you are still on our side. Oh Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, prove yourself again. Do more than we can dare hope for. And then take all the glory. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And then shake hands with one or two people. Tell them, God, we glorify his name in your life tonight. Sin, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. The first time God introduced himself to man, was in Genesis 17, verse 1. And he said, I am Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. According to scholars, Bible scholars, those who know the Bible very well, they said that what God said was, I am God, your mother's breast. that if you, as a child, can suck the milk in your mother dry, it is only then you can exhaust me. I am the inexhaustible God. There is nothing you want from me that is not there. A woman can give birth to four children. We had the testimony of one in a meeting just a week ago. She gave birth to four. And if you see the lady, she wasn't very big. But the four children would suck breasts until they are tired and there will still be breast milk flowing. 
the all-sufficient one. Sufficient for you, sufficient for me, sufficient for all your neighbors, sufficient for all Christians all over the world. He is the all-sufficient God. And, and I am so grateful to him. As I listened to the testimonies of tonight, I saw clearly he was preparing us for something extraordinary. Every miracle is special. But the testimonies of tonight are extra special. You see, many a times when, when you listen to some of these testimonies, you, you need to put yourself into this situation. Imagine a relation of yours. Bleeding. Bleeding through the nose, bleeding through the mouth, bleeding through the ears, bleeding through the eyes. How will you feel? And yet, there is a God, my God, who can pick that situation. And today we see the fellow healthy and strong. Imagine you are one of those people kidnapped. And they took their cutlass. Their, their cutlass is not blunt. Their, their cutlass is sharp. And they brought it down on your leg. And you were expecting blood to begin to flow. That is if the, if the bone is not shattered. And you look down. I mean, when your kidnappers began to beg you to pray for them. <laughs> <laughs> Does it not remind you of what happened in Egypt when Pharaoh said to the children of Israel, please go quickly and bless me also? There is a God in heaven. <laughs> and very, very soon, all your enemies will come and bow down to you. I shared a testimony with my children, the disciples yesterday. I saw it in the, uh, what do you call it? In, on the internet, in YouTube, where there was this soldier who was a Christian and won't keep his mouth shut. He was always talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so the others were always bullying him. And one day they decided to disgrace him. And they were gathered together and the leader of the group commanded him, commanded the Christian, I want you to drive this car from here to there and pack it very well. And the boy said, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know how to drive. I said, I command you. 
Take the key. The boy took the key, entered into the car. Because when he said, I can't drive, he said, ask your Jesus to help you now. A boy got into the car and drove the car perfectly and parked it where they said it should be parked. Then he came out of the car and he saw all the soldiers weeping and saw their leader trembling, removed his cap. And the boy was wondering, what's, what's going on? And the leader of the group went to the car, opened his bonnet, because there's no engine in the car. That's my God, you know. I believe God wants me to just tell you some of these stories so that uh, <laughs> before this night is out, you will know who is called Jehovah El Shaddai. I told the pastors at the prayer room a testimony. You know, the day is coming when we will have Holy Ghost service and all we will do will just be testimonies. <laughs> will that be all right? I won't tell you all the details because this is being aired all over the world. But we have a church somewhere where a church is not supposed to be <laughs> one of these nations. And the pastor there contacted me months ago. Daddy, please pray for us. There is this woman in our little church. The doctors have told her she has no womb. So there's no way she can ever have a child. But we believe that if we pray, God will do it. So I prayed. And yesterday, I got a call from him. Daddy, we're all weeping for joy here because the woman without a womb is now pregnant. I hereby decree in the name that's above every other name everything that is missing in your body shall come back. You know, <laughs> when I was younger, because I'm still young, we have uh, these people who come to our village selling medicine. They call them fine medicine. Some of the old people will know them. And they come and sell us anything, anything. We don't know which is which. So one day they came, and I think that was when capsules had been, had just been introduced. And they were telling us, ah, finally we have a medicine that can cure every sickness. The same medicine for headache, for stomachache. <laughs> One tablet kills all. That's what they said. Of course, we come to discover later on they were just deceiving us. 
But do you know, medicine have been searching that one day they will find a drug that can cure all sickness. Won't that be wonderful? If they can find just one drug that will be good for headache, good for stomachache, good for asthma, good for cancer, good. Would that not be wonderful? But I have good news for you. We already have that tablet. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Call that name again. Physically is sufficient for one. One person might be you. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, verse 2 to 9, the Bible tells us a man had been sick for 38 years. Jesus came in, he didn't touch him, he just spoke. And the sickness of 38 years ended. It doesn't matter how long you have been sick. In the name that's above every other name, tonight you will be healed. But then Jesus healed him and left the place. What about all the others? Well, in Matthew chapter 8, from verse 14 to 17, Matthew 8, from verse 14 to 17, the Bible tells us how Jesus entered into Peter's house and saw the mother-in-law sick of fever and healed her. A new spread. And so the people around began to bring all the sick people. And every one of them was healed. You know, I have a feeling with me, within me, and I believe there might be one or two people who will share the feeling that this is a night like that night. <laughs> that everybody will be healed tonight. Is sufficient for one, but it's also sufficient for all. And he can heal just by speaking. The Bible says he sent his word and he healed them. He can heal by touching. And he said clearly in Mark chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18, that his disciples can continue to do the same thing for him. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I'm going to ask you to do something you probably haven't done before. Something special tonight. On this very special night. And for you to understand, I will remind you of a story. The first time I went to Zambia, That's some 30 something, or almost 30 years ago, thereabout. I got there, I ate something very different from what I'm used to eating. So my stomach got angry. And I began to go to the toilet in the night. I think when it was about 24th time, that I've been to the toilet. Suddenly I remember that it is written. See, I mean, if the pastor is sick, he could run to the general overseer. Uh, to whom will the general overseer run? Then I remember it is written, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
He didn't say who the sick he will be. I'm the sick one now. This is my hand. So I lay the hand on my head. And I say, in the mighty name of Jesus, stomach, obey God. It is written, I will eat any deadly thing. It won't hurt me. And the stooling stopped. I told you that because I want you to lay your own hands on your own head right now and decree and say, in the mighty name of Jesus, everything in my body that should not be there, get out now. <laughs> say it loud and clear. Let God hear you. Let, decree. Lay your own hand on your own head and say in the mighty name of Jesus, body, hear the word of God. Be made whole now. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. He's sufficient for one, he's sufficient for all. He can heal by speaking, he can heal by touching, he can heal through his dress, he can heal through the anointed handkerchief of his servant, and you've had several testimonies along that line. He can heal through shadow. Because in Acts chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16, Acts 5 from verse 14 to 16, the Bible tells us the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. By whatever method, you will receive your healing tonight. <laughs> Materially, is sufficient for one. In 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16, it was sufficient for the widow of Zarephath. That woman had only one meal left. God stepped in, and for almost three years, she kept on having food every day. But it's not just sufficient for one. Is sufficient for all. In John chapter 6 from verse 5 to 13, John 6 from verse 5 to 13, he fed 5,000 men, not counting children, with five loaves of bread and two fishes. And there were 12 baskets left over. Everybody ate and everybody was full. I have a feeling within me that God had arranged tonight's meeting specifically so that all of us who are present and at least all those who are connected with us one way or the other in a way we cannot explain All our financial problems will be solved. <laughs> Spiritually, is sufficient to deliver one person. If that fellow has only one demon, as in Mark chapter 1, 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, eh, just speak a word and the demons will be gone. If the fellow has as many as seven demons, according to Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3, Luke 8, 1 to 3, God is sufficient. Because Mary Magdalene had not just one, seven of them. 
And God was sufficient for the seven. If a man, if a man has a legion, as you know very well, Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20, Mark 5, 2 to 20, he, the, the, the madman of Gadara, he had a legion. And my God was so sufficient for all of them. But it's not just sufficient for one person. It is sufficient for even a whole city. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8. Acts 8, 5 to 8. Philip went to the city of Samaria and flushed out every demon there. I have good news for someone here today. Because of you, every demon in your village will be cleared out. And then you can empower. You can give spiritual power to just one person. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. You can read it from verse 1 to 22. Acts 9, 1 to 22. He empowered Saul of Tarsus after he knocked them down onto the road of, on the road to Damascus. But he can also empower as many people as are present. In Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, Acts 2, 1 to 4, everyone present in the upper room got the power of the Holy Spirit the same day, the same time. A young man met me and said, Daddy, I want the kind of power God has given you. Do you think he can give it to me? I said, why not? He's sufficient for one, and he's sufficient for all. Is anybody hungry for power here tonight? My God will empower you. He can steal any storm. It's sufficient to steal any storm. Whether by sea, Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, Mark 4, 35 to 41, he spoke a word, peace be still. And the waves became quiet. Thank you, Father. The Lord said that the one, that there's someone here tonight, he said the one who is ordained to bring about your promotion, we have a special dream tonight. He spoke a word when there was a storm at sea and everything became quiet. But there are storms that are not storms on the ocean. There are storms of life. Like in Numbers chapter 6 from verse 1 to 35. Number 6 from verse 1 to 35. When on of a sudden, a lot of people ganged up against Moses and began to challenge his authority and began to speak all manners of rubbish against him. And God stepped on, on the scene. And in just one moment, all the enemies were swallowed. Alive. 
You don't know what is a storm until somebody lies against you and he says, I stand by what I've said. And you have no way of proving that he's wrong. I pray you will never experience that kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> consider you a boy, a young boy. And all of a sudden, a girl comes and said, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant for you. Ah, me? Where did I meet you? You are the one. You are the one who did it. And you, everybody will be saying, ah, are you the only boy in town? How come he comes to you, to you alone? But it's not me. Uh, where is your, where's your witness? And, and the guy said, what, what kind of witness are we talking about? Do you invite a witness to that kind of situation? If there's any gang of people against you, in the name that's above every other name, God will take care of them. He can steal a storm that comes in the air. In Psalm 91 verse 5, Psalm 91 verse 5, he said, you don't have to be afraid of terror by night or arrows that fly by day. No oh, storm can come in the air. <laughs> I remind you of the story of a man who came years ago with his wife and said, I'm sorry, sir, I've discovered that my wife is the witch who is troubling me. And I want you to please help me. Ah, sister, is it true? Sister said, don't mind him. It's, it is his mother who is the witch, not me. <laughs> and um, I was much younger then. So I said, well, uh, sister, I agree with you, I don't mind him. Let us reach an agreement. Let me pray for you. If he's lying against you, everything you do will just keep on prospering. But if it is the truth, I will decree that the demon in you be bound. And since you say there's no demand there, then there's no problem. But you need to know, once we, because the man said the, 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 the demon have, have sent the demon, is a snake. If I say that this demon be bound, if the snake is there and is bound, the snake won't be able to go out to hunt. So he will be eating what is inside. And he'll be defecating inside. He asked me to pray. I said, okay. So we prayed. When the husband brought her back, weeks later, she had become about three times her normal size because the demon had been depositing all kinds of rubbish in her. Anyone who had been using any form of evil force to slow you down. <laughs> if they don't repent, I decree that all their evil forces be bound. He can give joy. He can give joy to one person. He has enough joy to give, the, like I said, the kind of joy 
Thank you, Father. Some of you will remember the story of, uh, of a boy whose parents are professors at the University of Ibadan. But the boy was so dull. I mean, you will imagine the father a prof, the mother a prof, but the boy, oh, he was always the, at the bottom of the class. Moving from a class of 25 to a class of 30, his position would move from 25th to 30th. And then the parents got born again and brought the boy. And we prayed a simple prayer for the boy. And God intervened. The next examination the boy took, he came first. The teacher said, it's not possible. He said, even if they gave him the answer to copy, he will copy it wrong. So they gave him another exam, and he scored higher. So he became a surprise to his lecturers. I told you this story because God said there's someone here today. Now from now on, your academic so performance will surprise your teachers. God can give joy to one person and make that joy so big that others will share. Like in Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 21 from verse 1 to 7, Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all those who here will laugh with me. That will be the testimony of somebody here tonight. But God can give joy to a whole nation. It's sufficient to do that. In Exodus 15, from verse 1 to 20, Exodus 15, from verse 1 to 20, it was a whole nation singing, dancing, after God has put an end to their problems. How many of you will say amen? If I should say that Nigeria will never know sorry again. That amen is not loud enough. And for those of you in other nations, I also want to decree, in the name that's above every other name, God will give joy to your nations. But now, because of time, because I would love you to spend some time in prayer tonight. Let's get a bit personal. This all-sufficient God. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. I'm sure you know the story of David and Goliath. We all know the story. But many of us don't pay attention to something David did. You know, when he got to the brook, the Bible said he took five smooth stones. He was going to fight Goliath, but he took five smooth stones. It is later on, as you study the Bible further, that you will discover that Goliath had four brothers. David didn't know. He just took five stones, guided by the Holy Spirit. So one stone for Goliath, four stones for his brothers. The Lord asked me to tell you, somebody in particular, he said he would take care of your Goliath.
And he will take care of all his allies. <laughs> and that asked me to say this one. That one day somebody is going to stand here and testify. That five people die in a row in their family. Then they will remember. God said, I will take care of your Goliath and all his allies. God is sufficient for my past. We discussed that one during the Holy Communion yesterday. First John chapter 1 verse 7, First John chapter 1 verse 7 says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, Paul said, I wronged no man. Paul oh, said, I've never done wrong to any man. The first time I read that, I said, ah, Paul, you lied. You were the chairman the day they were stoning Stephen. If I don't know of any other fellow, I know that. But then the Lord spoke to me. The one who was chairman when they were stoning Stephen died on the road to Damascus. The man who got off from the ground was a brand new creature. Everything you have ever done in the past, if the devil tries to remind you, tell him, my God has taken care of all. <laughs> Is sufficient for my past. He is sufficient for everything evil that I did before I met the Lord Jesus Christ. He made a promise in Jeremiah 31, verse 34. <laughs> and this one is my own. Amen. The Lord says there's someone who is expecting one open door. He asked me to tell you before the end of the year, I will open seven. So you can begin to count them. Maybe when they are seven, you will come and testify. God made a promise in Jeremiah 31 verse 34. Jeremiah 31 verse 34. He said, not only will I forgive, he said, I will not even remember your sins again. Their sins I will remember no more. Ah. Daddy asked me, I know it's a special night. Daddy asked me to remind you of the story of one of my sons. Uh, his boss in his place of work was harassing her because she refused to compromise. So he told her, there will be no promotion for you as long as I am here. 
And then we prayed a simple prayer. And God got the bus transferred to another section of the company. And my daughter was promoted to the position he vacated. As soon as my daughter settled down, they brought the boss, former boss, back. So they were now on equal level. Well, the Lord asked me to tell someone that story. I'm going to put you in a place where no one will ever be able to harass you again. One of these days, if I remember, I will tell you a story, but all that God wants me to tell you now is that there is somebody who has just lost a very big opportunity. And the Lord asked me to tell you in a parable to say that you missed the train so that you will not miss the plane. When the time comes, you will understand. <laughs> no matter how fast the train can move, it can only move on land. The plane can fly. It's a joy if you miss the train so that you don't miss the play. Now, God is not only sufficient for my past, as we learned yesterday during the Holy Communion, He's also sufficient for my present. Psalm 23 from verse 1 to 6. Psalm 26 from verse 1 to 6 tells you everything you need on a daily basis that God will supply. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. First of all, he gives you food to eat, he gives you water to drink, he gives you adequate sleep, he protects you from all manners of animals, or uh, wild animals, etc., etc. He prepares a table before you, in the presence of your enemies, a poor anointing on your head until it overflows. He sees to it that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. For how long? He is sufficient for your past, sufficient for your present. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. I like this one, that's why I laughed. The Bible says there's someone here, he said all human signs are saying to you, it is too late. Daddy asked me to tell you, I will defeat all signs with a wonder. <laughs> oh, my father, you are good. The Lord asked me to tell someone, Jonah spent three nights in total darkness, but he was still brought out into the light and still fulfilled destiny. He asked me to tell you, your third night is tonight.
you will still fulfill destiny. Now God is sufficient for your past, sufficient for your present, sufficient for your future. Because it's not only Alpha, but it's also Omega. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Revelation 1 verse 8. And the Bible says, like we learned also yesterday, that Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, Colossians 1 verse 27 made it clear. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As the Lord lives, if you're a true child of the living God, you are not going to end in shame. I'm going to give you a little case study before I close. And that will be the case of uh, one fellow called Esau. You know, before Esau was born, according to Romans chapter 9, from verse 10 to 16, Romans 9, 10 to 16, God had said, I hate Esau. He wasn't born yet. He hasn't even done anything right or wrong. And say so Esau will serve his younger brother. Ah, poor Esau. And you know the story in Genesis 27 from verse 1 to 40. Genesis 27 from verse 1 to 40. When it was time for Esau to be blessed, he wasn't around on time. But God is he so good that this boy who got just a remnant of blessing was so blessed that when you read Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 7, when the one who got the big blessing was coming and the one who got a little blessing was coming to meet him, is the one who got the big blessing who was trembling. Our God is so great that if all you get tonight is a crumb of blessing. Your life can still be amazingly glorious. But I want to assure you, you are not going to get a crumb. Because crumbs are meant for dogs. Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. When, the, when that woman came to Jesus and said, please have mercy on me, my daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Jesus said, I can't give the bread of children to dogs. The woman said, yes, sir, I agree. I'm a dog. But a dog at least get a crumb that fell down from the child's table. She got a crumb, and the crumb solved her problem. Tonight, in the name that's above every other name, you will get a whole loaf of bread. Why? Because it's more than enough. A crumb from him can perform wonders. So you can then imagine what a real loaf can give. I've told you a story before. This one is mine again, but I will just share it with you. And I'm about to close. I told you that years ago, I went to the East. 
and uh, I was returning and I got to Asaba and I was standing there coming to Lagos waving every car to see if they would give me a lift to Lagos and I if you are looking for a lift, you are looking for Kabu Kabu, so you look for a car that looks as if the owner will want to make some quick money by giving you a lift and charging you. So all the old cars that I saw, I waved them down. None of them stopped. Then I saw this brand new Mercedes-Benz car the one that we used to call Lobokun, Mercedes 280, brand new, was coming. When I saw how brand new it is, I didn't bother to wave. Because this fellow is not going to pick up anybody. But I, 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 I just raised my hand. I didn't quite wave. And the car pass by and all of a sudden he stopped and reversed to where I was standing and he said you need a lift I said yes sir where are you going I said Lagos he said come in hey. and you know I was standing by the roadside, he was at the driver's seat, so when I entered, I sat at the owner's corner. And uh, there was somebody with him in front. By the way they were talking, they were talking American English. I remember telling you that story before, once ago, when God asked me to prophesy to somebody that all the miracles that had passed by you will reverse back. But that's, that's, that's not even the prophecy for tonight. Then I was sitting there in the air condition. Come here, I enjoyed myself all the way to Lagos. So we got to Pangroove, and the man branched to, to refuel at one petrol station. And he said to me, sorry, sir, please give me some minutes. I want to refuel. I said, sir, ah, thank you, sir. <laughs> You, we're already in Lagos. Thank you, sir. I will take a taxi from here to my house. He said, no. Where do you live? I said, Surulere. He said, just give me a few minutes. I will take you all the way home. My daddy asked me to tell someone here tonight, I will help you all the way. Oh, if you are the one, please spend a minute or two praising God. Say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I know you will help me all the way. I thank you. Oh, if, if that's the only thing I've had tonight, that's enough for me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We have prayed. Please be seated. God is all sufficient. There's something that happened in the story of Esau and Jacob that I believe is very significant for us tonight because this is a very special night. When in Genesis 32, from verse 1 to 7, like I said earlier on, Jacob heard that Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men. He was shattered. The man I cheated, 
The man who promised that when my father dies, I will die also is coming with 400 bodyguards. He was afraid. But God is more than enough. He did not just bless Jacob. He made sure that his destiny was not truncated. He knew that Esau was coming to kill. So God arranged a prayer session for Jacob. When you read the Bible in Genesis 32, from verse 24 to 30, Genesis 32, 24 to 30, all of a sudden, the Bible said there was an angel that came wrestling with Jacob. And the, <laughs> the Bible tells us an angel can kill thousands of soldiers in one night. Now, it is that angel now that is wrestling with Jacob. And Jacob prevailed. So you can see drama there. And the angel dislocated, dislocated one of his thighs. And the boy was still wrestling. <laughs> drama. The angel said, Let me go. And Jacob said, I won't let you go. <laughs> he could have dislocated his head. But because God is all sufficient, because God wanted an excuse so that by the time it was the following morning, the one who came to kill will now, now come to embrace. He arranged a night of prayer. I believe God has arranged tonight to be a night of prayer. A night when we are going to wrestle with the all-sufficient God. So that by tomorrow morning, Every enemy will become friends. And instead of our destiny being truncated, our destiny will become fulfilled. So when it is time to pray tonight, I want you to remember one song we used to sing when I was a younger Christian. I won't let go, I won't let go, I have Jesus, I won't let go. How many of you know that song? Hey, not many old people here. <laughs> Tonight we are not going to let Jesus go. We are going to wrestle until we have a breakthrough. How many of you are trusting God for a breakthrough tonight? Ah, by the time the sun rises tomorrow, you'll be singing a new song. But before we pray, like I told you, bread is for children. Only crumbs are for dogs. And there are only two categories of people in the world, as far as God is concerned. You are either a child of God, or you are a dog. You are either born again, or you are a dog. I'm not the one who said so. It's the Bible. So if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, and you want to become 
a child of God. You want to leave the category of dogs. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, make sure you are standing before this altar so that I can join my faith with yours and we can cry to God for your salvation. He is sufficient to change even dogs to children. And all you need to do is come to him. He will save your soul. You will become a child of God. And you will not be dealing with crumbs anymore. You'll be dealing with the full loaf of bread. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to become a child of God, come now as I begin to count. One. The prayer points. Number one, I think we all need to really thank God for tonight. Thank Him that He has visited us mightily tonight. That you can be part of this service, prison. And then you're going to talk to him and say, Father, I want to remain whole permanently. Not just made whole, but made whole permanently. I don't want to be ever sick again. And I know you can do it. Then number three. Father, don't let anybody in my generations to come ever have to beg for bread. In other words, eradicate poverty permanently in my generation. Number four, I want you to cry to him and say, Father, from now on, Make my family a no-go area for Satan and his hosts. From tonight onward, make me and my family a no-go area for Satan and his host. And then number five. Say, Father, please empower me tonight abundantly empower me tonight abundantly the number six you say father Please make my future extraordinarily glorious. Make my future extraordinarily glorious.
Number seven. Please pray for me and my family too. As well as the redeemed Christian Church of God. Pray to the one who is more than sufficient. So continue to take care of me, my family, and the redeemed Christian Church of God. And then, number eight, pray for our convention. That God will supply all our needs for the convention, physical, material, spiritual, abundantly so that the convention will be the best that we have had so far. And then And pray for yourself, your own personal prayer point. I'm going to give you more than 15 minutes.